Hi guys, I'm Dr. Akib. I'm a registered doctor here in Sri Lanka and a fully registered doctor with the GMC. Today we're going to talk about how you can make a proper study plan that is going to be effective towards your lab preparation. But before we head into the video, it's important to understand that due to the current corona pandemic, dates of the exams are fully booked and sometimes you can't get the dates. So what you can do is you can customize this plan accordingly to your situations to achieve optimum results. So without further ado, let's head into the video. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to do a background check of all these exams. What I mean by that is you need to find out when these exams are held and where are they held and what is the last date you can apply for this exam. So for example, if the PLAB one is held in November, the latest you can apply for the PLAB exam is in September. So you need to know exactly when these exams are held so that you can make sure you get those bookings without fail. So the next thing is that you need to set a deadline. The problem with a lot of people is that they don't fully commit to these exams. I mean, a lot of people saying that, ah, oh, yeah, I'm planning to do this exam in the next six months. I'm planning to do this exam next year. I'm planning to do this exam somewhere within the course of this year. No, that is not the right approach. You need to set a deadline and know the exact date that you will be sitting for this exam. I'm a little bit extreme in my approach. What I did was I went and booked the exam first, paid and reserved my seat. Only then I was like, okay, this is the day I'm going to do the exam. And I was fully in. I think sometimes that kind of a commitment is necessary for you to really start taking this exam seriously. But I do understand that not everyone is like me and some people do need some time to book these exams. So what I would suggest is if you can't book the exam, exam and pay for it, at least set a tentative date. For example, if you're going to do the exam on November, then you put the date as November 2nd will be your exam date and then you prepare accordingly to that. The most important thing to do is to make sure you get hold of all the study material that you will be needing for these exams. Yes, I mean all of it all the question papers, all the notes, all the books, everything. This is because this will kind of give you a guide to know how much studying you have to do. It will kind of give you like a studying go. Sometimes by looking at the material, you might be overwhelmed as to how much you have to study. So this was some of the material that I used to study for these exams. Looks daunting, doesn't it? <laughs> but don't worry, by the end of this video, I will break it down into little pieces that is going to make it easy for you to study. So now you have done the background work, you have given yourself a date or you have booked the exam for a specific date. So you know when the exam is going to be held. And number three, you have got hold of all of the material that you need to study. Now we are ready to make the plan. So to make this video simple, I'm going to give myself a date. So today is January 1st, 2021 and my exam date will be June 1st, 2021. So that looks like six months. What I want is I want to know how many weeks there are for the exams. So what you do is you take up the calendar and you start counting the number of weeks that are there until June 1st. So in my case, I have 21 weeks for the exams. But although it looks like we have 21 weeks, do we really have 21 weeks? It's important guys that while you're studying for these exams, you have to pace yourself accordingly so that you don't burn out. Even in those 21 weeks, life will happen to you, events will happen. So there will be a lot of days that you will not be studying for these exams. This is what I call slippage. Slippage is basically any life events, trips, or anything of that sort that you have planned that you will not be studying. So then let's start doing the slippage. So in the 21 weeks, I usually want Sundays off. That is my rest day. So in the 21 weeks, I will not be studying on Sundays. So let's minus that. So that's going to be 21 Sundays, which is approximately three weeks. So when you minus that, now we have 18 weeks. So another thing I would like to add is events. So family nights, movie nights, going out with friends, going to the gym. All of that is also going to be days where I will not be studying. So I think a roughly a good two weeks would be a good time given to those days. So let's take off two weeks from 18. Now we have 16 weeks until the exams. Then probably I would also have a trip or something planned off with family and friends. So I will give another two weeks off probably because I would end up going for a trip. So now that 16 weeks becomes 14 weeks. I will go ahead and be a bit more extreme and I say some emergency came up and for one week I couldn't study. So I'm going to take off another one week from this. So now 14 weeks became 13 weeks. I usually want to be done one week before the exams. So let's take off that last week so that you by 12 weeks you should be done. So 12 week is the magic number. This is the amount of time you have to study for these exams because this is the amount of time that you will be dedicating to active studying. So just focus on this and forget about the six months that you have. 
Right. So now we know that we have 12 weeks till the exam. So let's break it down. Remember I told you, you need to get hold of all the materials that you need to study. Let's think of that. So in my case, I want to be done with the 1700 questions at least twice before the exams. So 1700 questions into two will be 3800 questions. And you have 12 weeks, 3800 divided by 12. That is approximately 316 questions to do per week. So this is the weekly number or target that you have to do. You have to do 316 questions per week. Let's divide that into a daily goal. So let's divide 316 by 7. That comes up to around 45 questions per day. So this is your daily target. If you're able to get through 45 questions per day, that means every single day you are getting closer to your exams. So you don't have to worry. As long as you do your 45 questions per day, then you just can relax the rest of the day because you have completed your daily target. This way you will be mentally relaxed, you will be calm and you will be able to study for these exams with a very composed mind. Also let's say for example by chance you're not able to finish 45 questions in a day. That is still fine because you have given so much slippage time to yourself that even by underperforming on certain days you will still be able to finish all your study material within the given time. This is the exact method that I used for studying for my exams. It might look a little bit extreme with the way I have added slippage and taken weeks off, but what I feel that by doing this, I become very active in studying and the days that I'm studying, I'm making sure I do focus studying and finish off my daily work. So this is how I managed to study and crack two medical licensing exams. And by using such a study plan, I was happy, relaxed, calm, composed, and make sure I did these exams very well because of a solid study plan that I mean. I hope that this video was helpful and you guys can use this to customize your own study plan so that you too can ace your club exam. So until next time guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.